All right, welcome back to the Crypto ZX channel, to the XRP community. Shout out to each and every one of you guys for showing tremendous amount of love. Continue supporting, and you will see a continuation of these updates. So, as we are, you know, wrapping up the week and going into Saturday morning, we are seeing quite a bit of red across the board. And I'm sure if you watch some of my other updates, you guys know what's going on with the broader market. Um, you know, as far as the broader market goes, like you can see, we are seeing a significant amount of red, um, you know, against Bitcoin. Uh, if you're looking at XRP, you know, it's holding much better than the broader market. You can see down only 1.6%, but still down right now. But let's take a closer look and you know, we've got a lot to talk about. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. But before I get into it, as always, just a quick disclaimer, anything on this channel is not financial advice. Always do your own due diligence and research when you are investing in crypto. I just want to highlight this first. BlackRock's IBIT bought $292 million worth of Bitcoin yesterday. That's 4,270 4, Bitcoin added to their holding. There you have it. They're about buying Bitcoin on a daily basis why are they buying bitcoin why do you think they're doing this because they see the bigger picture they know there's not more than 21 million bitcoin ever and they're trying to obtain as much bitcoin as they can because they don't just see the horizon for this bull cycle they see the long-term horizon and you know these are big asset managers they can wait you know they can wait and they're trying to control bitcoin and crypto um, you know, this does not come as a surprise to me, guys. That's big number. So around 5,880 Bitcoin were bought and 7,570 Ethereum were sold on October 25th. So you actually saw inflows for BTC, not a surprise. You know, it's the biggest asset in the crypto space. And you actually saw net outflows of $20 million for Ethereum. Again, I'm not surprised at that. 80% of Bitcoin ETF demand comes from retail investors, which is us. You heard it correct, which is us. And of course, you know, the remaining 20 would be, you know, big uh, institutions, of course, um, that are coming in and, you know, obviously, or big businesses that want, um, you know, the Bitcoin ETF. But this tells you everything you need to know. You know, we've been speaking about, uh, you know, big money coming in. We're speaking, speaking about the landscape shift. This is a perfect example right in front of us. But, you know, some big news coming out today. You know, shout out to Good Morning Crypto. It says, U.S. government launches investigation into USDT crypto firm Tether. Ripple CEO Brad Gerlinghouse issued a black swan warning five months ago about Tether, the largest stablecoin issuer on the planet. The U.S. government is going after Tether. That is clear to me. The federal government is investigating Tether for possible you know, violation of sanctions and anti-money laundering rules reported, uh, reporting uh, you know, of WSJ. Is this the beginning of a Tether Black Swan event? And, you know, it doesn't require anyone to have, you know, extreme, extreme, you know, knowledge about Tether to really understand that, you know, some things just don't add up. And over the course of the last, you know, since I've been in the space for the last eight years, I've heard countless of, you know, big um, names coming out and, you know, really questioning whether Tether is even, um, you know, all that, whether they actually have the reserves because, you know, they can come and print uh, or, you know, launch, mint new Tether, but do they really have that reserve to show? And now you're starting to see the U.S. government going after Tether. And this is huge because it's been quite clear. It doesn't matter if regulators are coming in. And, you know, this honestly, you know, kind of sheds a light as to how important, um, you know, the likes of, you know, regulation really is for the crypto space. You know, some people don't like it, but this could really show you how important it is in terms of from an investor standpoint, because this can really hurt investors. And, um, you know, if you're really looking at this, um, I think if Tether were to uh, just, you know, completely crash, I think crypto will go down substantially. Of course, um, you know, the uncertainty will be quite high. This is something I've been quite clear on. Despite, you know, Bitcoin ETF or not, I think this could kind of, you know, steer away retail investors, maybe not institutions because they're seeing the bigger picture because, of course, this might give them the chance to pick up cheaper Bitcoin if, you know, we were to see a black swan event. And, you know, according to Brad Gerlinghouse, so he thinks that, you know, there is going to be a black swan event, whether it's Tether or something else, he is projecting that. And, you know, this is part of the game. Uh, and this is where your risk strategy comes into play. If you don't, uh, you don't want that potential of that happening, then let me tell you, you're in the wrong market. Um, 
because anything can happen with this. You know, there's a lot of uh, things that can happen. Look at from, you know, the Ted, I'm sorry, look from the uh, Luna crash that tells you everything. There's a lot of different, um, you know, crashes that you can kind of go into that tells you everything, you know, what is, uh, you know, crypto all about. And this is where your risk strategy comes into play. But if you're not able to cope with that, then I guess crypto is not for you. And it's good to, um, you know, exit before, uh, you know, <laughs> you kind of find out um, the other way. Because, you know, you can make massive profits, but at the same time, you can completely get your profits wiped out completely or even go in the negatives. And if that's not okay for you, uh, then, uh, like I said, you know, this is where your own due diligence comes into play. But you can really start to see how important this really is. But let's go over uh, what Smoke has to say. Tether implosion is not difficult to imagine uh, when you fully comprehend all of the facts within the Tether files. And again, like I said, if you're a crypto OG, you know about this shouldn't really be a coming as a big surprise. Um, it honestly wouldn't take much to implode and likely will play out like this. A credible report surfaces casting doubts of Tether reserves, suggesting they tied up in risky, illiquid assets rather than they claimed one-to-one -one backing by the U.S. dollars. Institutional investors, uh, you know, quietly begin to convert their Tether holdings into more stable assets, causing stubble fluctuations in Tether value. Could not agree more. Um, as rumored spreads, um, you know, Tether starts trading below $1. And once that happens, this is where, you know, the extreme panic comes into play. Um, you know, panic sets in. There you go. That's what uh, Smoke has to say. And smaller investors rush to sell off their Tether, further uh, eroding its value. Exchanges begin to link or freezing Tether withdrawals, citing Ill liquidity issues. The stable coin loses its peg entirely, dropping rapidly in value as confidence collapses. The crypto market experiences a massive disruption and tether implosion becomes a stark um, you know, warning of the risks uh, inherited in unregulated financial instruments such as um, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and you can see big BTC uh, tanks, ETH tanks. Again, not a big surprise. Um, and only regulated uh, blockchains and uh, compliant stablecoins like RLUSD will remain to capture all of the lost liquidity. Don't believe me? Check out the below documented um, you know, all it would take is enough traders asking for their dollars all at once, which would force Tether to liquidate assets at a loss. Insane. Absolutely insane. Larger than Madoff. You know, Bernie Madoff, if you know, you know, if you understand finance, I'm sure you've heard about that uh, collapse. Um, and if this happens, guys, if this happens, look at this. USDT accounts for 90% of stablecoin volumes. And if you look at a lot of exchanges, USDT is one of the major pairs. And if this happens, you know, this could cause a black swan event. And of course, might not happen tomorrow, might not happen uh, today, or might not happen at all. But, you know, that risk factor, you know, due to some things that are coming out, you know, that are questionable, uh, kind of, you know, really bring in the alarm, um, you know, for the cr broader crypto space. But again, this is where your risk strategy comes into play. But let me know in the down, uh, comments down below what you guys think about this. This is where all real USD shines. Uh, but, you know, it would take some time for, you know, the broader market to, you know, kick back traction. But again, you know, these are just speculation. At the end of the day, would love to know your personal thoughts down below in the comments. Love you all. See you tomorrow in CryptoZX and peace out.